you were revealing this and speaking to Fox about what happened when you interviewed the sitting president of the United States, Joe Biden. I was stunned by this. I'll play the soundbite. I mean, I knew that they had they were heavy handed at network TV. Oh, we don't have the soundbite. But in any event, you were basically saying everything they that you asked, they controlled. And um, you said every single word and they told you no follow-ups. And so we actually, the sound, but I do have is we pulled some of the questions from the interview so that the audience could hear what was ESPN approved? Like, how did they, what, what did they say it's okay for Sage Steele to actually ask? Here's some of that. We are obviously still in the rollout phase of the COVID-19 vaccine. How do you envision this season going with so much up in the air still? You talk specifically about athletes and fans, many of whom have gotten the vaccine, others looking forward to it. There are people who are hesitant, athletes who are hesitant. So, Mr. President, yeah. if you're in a clubhouse or a locker room with those athletes, what would you say to those who are hesitant to get vaccinated? Governor Greg Abbott lifted the mask mandate. So the Texas Rangers say there will not be any attendance restrictions, Mr. President, 40,000 people with masks required except when actively eating and drinking. What are your thoughts on the Rangers' decision? Mr. Goodell said Tuesday the league is making plans to open its stadiums to full capacity for the upcoming season. What's your reaction to Commissioner Goodell's decision right now? Mr. President, I know you're a sports fan. I know no. the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden, is a sports fan. So can you give us a glimpse when Dr. Biden is watching Philly's games? What is she like? No, I'm sure they had that Dr. Biden thing written in there. <laughs> so see, I wouldn't have said doctor. <laughs> no, it could because she's fake news, doctor. It's not real. I'm right. sorry, but it isn't. So what, when they, when you had this conversation, because I know a lot of journalists have said, well, I, I never would have allowed them to do that. And I, I said on my show last week, Listen, uh, and I happen to know you, but it wasn't an attack on you, but I, I said a lot of journalists, and I know this is true in your case, you're basically a single mom. You got three mouths to feed, you need this job, and it's great for somebody on the sidelines to be like, oh, I would have thrown down and you know taken on. It's a very different reality when you're you in this position, having to feed your children, and you know very well what pushback is gonna get you. Exactly. I, I don't know that I would have done anything differently either, because you have to know which battles to choose. I had already chosen a couple of battles along the way. Um, and actually, there were a lot more that came just a couple of months later. So, you know, there, it, it's do you want to interview the sitting president of the United States or not? And if you want to, then these are the questions. And we, we will we will get back to you with what you will be saying. Um, you know, I it was a scary time. And this was right after the election. So this is 2021, March of 2021. And I did it. I, you know, I there's a lot of reasons why I think I was given the interview in the first place. Um, and it's based on um, some other things that they did not allow to happen um, with the former president. So um, it's something that when I'm ready to share, I'm going to bother you because I think it's just more about um, the control, I, the reason I want to speak about all of this in general is because I want people in an election year to understand um, the control that the mainstream media has and the inability for normal Americans to just go and, and watch and hopefully learn the truth and be able to form their own opinions. And if we're controlling things at a sports network, what are we doing at news networks, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I just took the opportunity and said, okay. I'm going to do it and take my orders. Um, and I, I don't know that I would change anything that I did at that moment. The one, one of the first questions, I don't know that it was in that clip, but it was about the president's opinion on whether or not they should move the Major League Baseball All-Star game from Atlanta. It was coming up that we summer. We actually have that. And Stand by, Sage. Let me play yeah. that and then you pick it up on the back end. Here it is, Sot 3. Tony Clark is the executive director of the Major League Baseball Players Association. He said he would, quote, look forward to discussing moving the All-Star Game out of Atlanta because Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed into law a bill passed by the Republican-led state legislature to overhaul how its state elections are run. So, Mr. President, what do you think about the possibility that baseball decides to move their All-Star Game out of Atlanta because of this political issue? I think today's professional athletes are acting incredibly responsibly. I would strongly support them doing that. The very people who are victimized the most are the people who are the leaders in these, in these various sports. 
And it's just not right. This is Jim Crow on steroids, what they're doing in, in Georgia and 40 other states. What it's all about. Imagine passing a law saying you cannot provide water or food for someone standing in line to vote. I have to say, I really like Joe Biden better in the first clip we ran where he wasn't saying anything. Yeah. I, <laughs> I agree. And I have to tell you, sitting there listening to that, there was like a rage in my belly because I'm, I'm saying, what do you mean passing laws against uh, giving water to people? And it goes all back to what? Do you think that because of the color of my skin, I'm not able, I'm not smart enough to remember to bring my driver's license or, or to actually go get one in the first place? Because to me, um, that's what all this talk leads to is, is racism, basically, for people like mm -hmm. me who apparently need assistance to do basic things in life. And that's what I ugh, that was like the first question, I think. And that's what I wanted to follow up with. And, and there were also technical issues leading up to it where we couldn't get our crap together leading up to the beginning of the interview. So I was having to like spill dead air with the president of the United States while we're trying to get our shit figured out behind the scenes. I'm trying to hurry people up over here and say so. How about your football career at Delaware? I mean, it was a, a very stressful situation. Needless to say, I would have loved to have been able to really follow up and say, wait, so you're, are you saying that 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 I'm not able? There's so that much would have there, been the Megan, greatest follow-up ever. I, I, trust me, I know, I know. And it, it killed me because I felt like I wasn't able to be a journal. I wasn't. I, listen, I'm a pretty good teleprompter reader, but like, that's all that was. You know, and, yeah, and I think yeah. that, again, people, our viewers, and that's what this is about. Again, it's not about, oh, woe is me. Whatever. I'm fine. I'm more than fine. And I'm grateful for every moment at ESPN, even that one. It's really if we don't continue to speak on this and the control that the mainstream media has, the networks, even though I believe many people at ESPN and elsewhere don't even believe what they're preaching, don't believe some of the craziness that's also left wing or, or and woke in many ways with the coverage. They don't all believe it, but they're all just following as well. So I just want people to know and to be careful as we enter this election cycle. Do your homework, dig deeper, and don't believe everything that you watch, especially on those networks. I uh, want to tell the audience, we reached out to ESPN about this and they declined to comment on whether they scripted your interview. Not surprisingly, there was no denial. As we approach another critical election, Many Americans are concerned. Recent studies reveal that an astonishing 56% of citizens report feelings of anxiety or dread about the upcoming election. But I want to tell you about AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. AMAC is more than a senior organization. During these challenging times, they fight for common sense and for the U.S. to return to traditional American values. Visit AMAC dot us slash megan today to get an exclusive election year special that's a four-year amac membership for just 30 bucks as an amac member you not only enjoy money-saving benefits but also the amac magazine free social security and medicare advice a trusted voice in washington and a community of like-minded patriots take advantage of this election year special four years for 30 bucks and be part of the solution join now at amac dot us slash megan that's amac.us forward slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.